Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. Oh, all right. Today I'm going to talk to you about my first job. <laughs> first employment. First proper official employment. You know, where you sign a contract and in UAE you have to be in a work visa. So my first official one, I'll talk to you about that today. <laughs> oh, I can't forget. <laughs> After two years of unemployment and searching and searching and searching and having heartbreaks and no one to guide me and no one to tell me what to put in a CV and one page CV, two page CV, three page CV, 17 page CV. Uh, finally, I <laughs> through, I don't know, through some reference or something or through a newspaper ad. I found this job in Karama. Karama is a place in Dubai. And uh, <laughs> I remember that. It was a shop. It was a shop called Dina Al Safa. That's the name, name of that uh, shop. So I think it was uh, someone had referred me. I'm not too sure. Someone had told me there's a vacancy or something like that. So I went there. Dina Al Safa. It was a shop, okay, a small shop. Not like a grocery shop. This was a shop run by a Emirates Airlines uh, cabin crew member, okay. He was a senior purser, very, uh, very nice guy. To this day, I have nothing but respect for him. But he was a tall fuck, man. He was a tall, big guy. It's like <laughs> so big. Uh, his name, his name was Wakar. Okay, Wakar Jafar. The name sounds like Wakar Jafar, like Aladdin, you know. <laughs> but this guy had a big face and big chin, and <laughs> you know, he is one of these guys who is like, man, six feet his height, but he was like six feet shoulder to shoulder. He was not a bodybuilder or anything, but he was big. It was fucking big, man. Like tall guy, huh? And uh, huge build. I mean, when he would walk, you would feel his presence. And he was a guy like, you know, he was so big. If he wanted, he, <laughs> he could catch you like this and lift you up. He was like one of those Nordic Vikings, you know, big guy. So, okay. So this guy, Wakar, uh, I, I remember seeing him in uh, the the shop for the first time and I walked in nice guy you know Indian guy you know think a uh, typical not uh, he is he didn't look like the typical South Indian like the North Indian like the Kashmiri he had fair complexion big guy big chest and big arms and so think of a big uh, like a Hulk Hogan think like a six feet Hulk Hogan big guy so uh, went into the shop and there I saw it was uh, uh, all home theater system, you know, DVDs. Those days, those days, you're talking of, man, 25 years ago, okay. DVD players, then he had speaker sets and all the stuff that I think because he was, yeah, not I think, because he used to travel uh, with Emirates Airlines as a cabin crew, he used to go to Hong Kong and all these places. So he used to keep all these DVDs and uh, TVs, you know, these big CRT monitors, big ass, oh, heavy fucks of machines. And, you know, Harman Kardon speakers or different, different brands. Okay. So all this was there. And, uh, you know, like uh, you, you would have amplifiers and uh, equalizers, you know, the olden days, those big... Uh, 
TV sets or CD sets and tape deck and this and that. So you would have many of these machines. Most of them he purchased second hand. And uh, you might not know this, but uh, those days they would have uh, regions. Every DVD would have a region. I don't know, region one, region two, region three, whatever. So he would uh, have all these, uh, uh, you know, mix and match kind of stuff there. Okay. And uh, he had a kind of a premium crowd that would come there. So it was not like a bad place. It was not like shabby, you know, typical, you know, like me being a South Indian, I'm telling you this. Uh, you would not get a simple South Indian guy coming there. It means people who could afford to spend 5,000 bucks. Uh, and those days, 5,000 bucks was a big amount. 10,000 bucks, so, you know. And uh, DVD technology at that time was at its peak. So I was, uh, I saw the place, good. The guy was smart, very smart. And he didn't take a typical interview, he just saw my CV. I don't think he even bothered. He just looked at it and... And you know... <laughs> I still remember his voice. Oh, hey, you know... <laughs> yeah, this voice. Yeah, so you'll... You'll have to come to the shop and open the shop and... You know, just serve the customers and take care and... You know? So I was a squeaky little kid, man, and uh, you know, long haired and all that. So, uh, okay, fine, everything. Okay. So the salary he fixed for me is, I I don't know the exact amount, but I'm, I'm trying to remember. I think it was 1,500 bucks. Or 1,300, not too sure. I think 1,300. Uh, 1,300 or 1,500, not too sure. But I, I do know that uh, my rent would uh, take up the majority of the salary and he was kind enough to check uh, you know for a place nearby so that I didn't have to travel all the way from Sarja to Karama so he 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 searched for a place for me to stay nearby walking distance and I remember it was a bed space uh, small room, Indian family, and uh, you know, I think they took 1200. I can't remember, okay, but rent was pretty expensive, okay, rent was pretty expensive. And uh, nearby, there was a Malbari restaurant, or oh, where I would have my normal stuff roti, you know, porota. You call it porota, huh? <laughs> Chicken chukka. <laughs> the chicken which is served with spices and dry, it's called chicken chukka. And Indian food, especially South Indian food, you know, it's, it's a very funny combination. They have uh, a curry as a base and uh, they have chicken or beef or whatever. And they just mix, you know. If you put a little bit chili more, it becomes chicken chili. You put garlic a little bit more, it becomes chicken garlic. The same chicken, same chicken, flavored chicken, uh, which they marinate and keep the day before. So the chicken is the same. You just put something more, it becomes that. Chicken, ginger becomes, when you put more ginger in the chicken. Chicken curry, when you put more curry. Chicken fry, when the same chicken you fry. So you get the idea. So. But for me, I was, oh, I, oh, I love that food. So now, you have a shop, you have a nearby place, you have a restaurant. <laughs> for me, that was my life and I was very happy. Oh, new job, oh, I was very excited, got up in the morning. I, I was supposed to open the shop at around, I think, uh, nine o'clock in the morning, yeah. So I'd get up by eight, by, you know, 45 minutes, get ready, everything. And, uh, man, I remember those days. I would go to the Malbari shop, take the parota, breakfast, whatever, they would give either uh, chickpeas with curry or a chicken fry. You can get a chicken fry in the morning. <laughs> or you would get an egg or this thing, and I'd take it in a nice plastic bag. 
and I would go to the shop, open the shop. The funny thing is the whole shop would smell of that. <laughs> this I came to know once when he gave a surprise visit to visit me. He was like, what the fuck is this man? The smelling of... <laughs> he liked to keep the shop, you know, smelling nice. I would just eat, you know, because... But anyway, um, it was a nice place to work, man. There was no targets, there was no pressure of any sort. Just come open the shop and... Uh, and he would have his set clients who would come in. He would uh, send someone or another. And I would do my best to serve these clients. One client a day or sometimes two clients a day. Sometimes nobody. And I would kill time, I think, by uh, just watching some of those DVD movies. Oh, it was nice fun. I used to watch those movies. And uh, um, by the way, uh, that time internet, there was this dial-up connection and <laughs> there was nothing to do so I used to dial up and that time internet explorer was there so, uh, there was solitaire game, there was minesweeper one day one guy, his name was uh, Amit Midbakar, Mid Midbakar or something uh, today he is a online consultant for uh, investments so this guy young guy he came into the shop and he saw me and he asked how much for this how much for that i, I told him and uh, then you know he he was nice to me he was he said what do you do and i told him everything and he, why don't you come for uh, bowling so i was like oh wow okay sure he said uh, i'll uh, call you or send you an email Call me, and by the way, I had an Alcatel phone, okay, you know, uh, uh, you might not know this, but it, it was a, f the olden days, the phones were not smartphones, they were just like a small little device, and <laughs> the numbers when you had it, beep, 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 you know, it, it was like a toy phone, and you would get a, d a digital display like a Casio watch, just a number would be shown there, there was nothing else. And you could pull the antenna, there was a plastic antenna. Not that it worked, but it gave you the illusion that if you pull the antenna up, the call would come better. So I had the Elka telephone, he said he'll call me. But when he said, I'll send you an email, I was like, what's, what's an email? So he's like, uh, you don't know what's an email? I said, no. He's saying, you'll get a message from the computer. I said. Like, I, I didn't know that you could get a mail from a computer. So, so I was like, yeah, you'll write a letter? No, man, I'll create an email for you, okay? So what he did is, that time Yahoo was the main uh, search engine. Uh, I remember IC, you, if you are from my days, you'll remember ICQ chat. Uh, there, there was a, like, uh, you have, uh, today you have Facebook Messenger. Those days, there was no such thing as Facebook, there was no such thing as Facebook Messenger. The only way you could chat, there was a, uh, you don't call it app, it was called a software. Uh, so, but anyway, it was an app I had to call ICQ, where you needed to have a certain number, no name, 1678 or whatever. Okay, and whenever you receive a message, oh my goodness, you'd get, uh oh, you know, <laughs> Google search, you'll get ICQ, it was funny. And uh, the media player was Windows media player, all graphics or it would have Winamp. This is all olden days, huh? you might not remember all this. There was no YouTube, there was no movies. Okay, so he logged into something called Hotmail. Now it's Outlook, okay? That time Windows used to come with a Windows browser, Windows, everything. So he say, asked me, is there a dial-up? I said, yeah, there's dial-up. And uh, internet those days was not like ADSL or the big bandwidth. You had to connect through the phone, it would go like <laughs> I want you to Google search all this, it might sound like Chinese. So he connected to the internet through the phone. Once it got connected, he created a, an email account. My first email account was Loy the boy at hotmail.com. 
like when he asked me what should i put your email name as i didn't know what to put so i just told him uh, put loy the boy he said okay fine loy the boy at hotmail.com <laughs> and so began my first email loy the boy at hotmail.com i was very happy a it it soon got shut down because i never used it i did create it for memory sake but i didn't use it again so i don't know someone might create loy the boy at hotmail.com whatever okay so created that loy the boy i was very happy he created a email and he told me he'll send me emails okay <laughs> every day i would check the email there was no email nothing would come just imagine you create a email and there was nothing those days there was no spamware and all that and, and who would send me messages but because i found this chatting oh as to chat uh, as to go to these yahoo groups there were yahoo group rooms and all that he showed me where you can chat and all that and uh, those days i wanted to get uh, you know i'm alone so obviously wanted to chat speak to some girl or something and i used to talk to these random people girls i used to even portray as a multi millionaire those days imagine me shopkeeper portraying as a multi millionaire talking to some i don't know who is this person on the other end she says she is a female or i was very happy talking to some girl porn sites were i think i didn't know there was porn sites even that time <laughs> i really didn't know there was nothing man even kaza download and all that that came later okay kaza peer to peer now you have uh, bit uh, comet or uh, torrents so anyway why i'm telling you this is because uh, the internet bill used to come to 100 dollars or so imagine my boss or my employer has signed up for the cheapest internet connection because he's hardly there in the shop he comes once every 3 days once every 5 days he would go travel because you know emirates airlines uh, he would go for long flights he was a very senior guy there so <laughs> when he would come back he would come back with either dvds or uh you know stuff to sell in the shop and then you know he's a boss so obviously the shop and inside there's that room where there's a computer this thing there he would come in but when the phone bill and uh, phone, phone bill would come you be fucking pissed what the fuck is this man what the fuck <laughs> oh goodness uh poor fellow and i would just sit there quiet and he would shout at me what the fuck is this and he would ask me and i didn't know what to answer but he was a nice guy because he could have disconnected the internet or he could have prevented me from accessing it he never did that you know he never did that he would shout at me but he would not disconnect the internet very soon one day he came uh, with his wife and his kids the funny thing is wife uh, and i clicked it's like uh, she she was like this motherly figure i would say motherly figure at that time it was more like uh, she was a boss's wife now don't get any kinky thoughts for me it was she was like a like my boss i kept him at a pedestal as to look up to him like a father figure <laughs> even though he was few years elder to me few years means he had i think 10 10 10 years of whatever 10 years or 15 years whatever ahead of me i think 10 years maybe 10 years so his wife uh, wonderful lady even you you will be surprised i'm in touch with her even today so she was my like my owners you know madam or wife and very nice lady very nice lady and i was i was so happy that you know somebody is talking to me because i used to be alone there and she a loy boy <laughs> and she would come down with her sister and you know sometimes they would talk and that friendship developed you know? so she was a nice lady a very nice lady she still is 
and you know that little bit of love and affection as she would talk to me and i was so happy so yeah the boss okay the wife hmm. now i have a family they would come with their children today their children are grown up i think they're married and they have their own lives so yeah he, he, he very nice man very nice man and but yeah when i wanted to leave that time things became really ugly that was another chapter in itself oh goodness and i was like a asshole man serious asshole i'll tell you that uh my boss doesn't know i'm sure he watches my youtube channel once a while <laughs> he's watching wakar this thanks i appreciate for everything you did for me you know the thing is even though like i can talk to him like a friend but that respect will always be there you know he was my first employer the respect will always be there a nice man he is i have nothing bad to say about him absolutely nothing in fact i was an asshole <sighs> he doesn't know this i'm sure now when he watches this he doesn't know this but i used to bring girls my age to the shop <laughs> uh, i have a nice time lock the shop nobody is there put the shutter down and ding bang in the shop i never told him this maybe now he will know ah because it was at a lonely corner man i had to bring my girlfriends there and ooh, nice time ooh we used to have action ah don't worry not condom sex just shagadelic sex the other sex has to go and do in their house <laughs> so has to bring the girls and all that but yeah it's always be always get worried will he come not come you know because he would never tell me when is his schedule whatever but he had given me total freedom to do whatever i like in the shop like you know display put things here there in fact he taught me how to connect wires and the amplifier and speakers so i learned that and the clients used to come in you know they they, they never treated me like shit they were very nice people there was a guy named i think suleiman or something very classy people man <laughs> he used to bring all kinds of dvds and asked to nicely watch them and because he had bought the dvds from abroad it was some uncensored stuff you know those days you used to censor stuff i was like oh very nice as to see it quietly and nobody uh, you know after the shop would get over 9 o'clock i had to close the shop so i close the shop and sit inside and watch only once i remember once a cid and cops came there because the shop was i think 12 o'clock or something it was open uh, i was sitting and watching i think chatting or watching movies I said no 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 you have to close oh sorry sorry i said otherwise it was all cool man but the funny thing is even those days when he was when i was working there i was constantly making friends with uh, other people to get jobs for being a dj being an mc you know my passion my goal was to get into this radio and you know media industry and that is where i resigned once and i tried to achieve a dream and it failed and i came back crying uh, even though i resigned i came back crying and he took me back <laughs> because i cried he took me back and yeah he forgave me he <laughs> imagine i i told him i'm resigning and then the second time round i did it again this time he got pissed off <laughs> and then i had to bring my mum <laughs> to speak to him not to put a ban or something he had his pro his pro was another pain in the ass egyptian guy but obviously good cop bad cop you know he he didn't want to make it so easy for me finally my replacement came and that was his relative steve his name was overall the experience well there were many other things which i obviously cannot share for whatever reason but all i want to tell you is my first job uh, 
I think I worked there for one and a half year and then eventually I tried getting into something or another and you know try to be a DJ try to be an MC all that failed and finally I went for a seminar even those days I used to love reading books that time I purchased this book uh, uh, what reading and writing how to analyze uh, how, how to make love happen by Bart Baggett I purchased that book on handwriting analysis and that I used to use to you know get attention with females score points and through that I one of the seminars that I went I bumped into the regional head of Citibank which I didn't know and I impressed him so much he gave me a job at Citibank so that's another story in itself but overall you know when I go back down this memory lane of my first job you could just say I was lucky man uh, my first proper official job you know what did I learn? <laughs> I, apart from home theatre system, apart from an independent business life and being free and all that, I mean, I, I got the, I got the, the flair for being independent, I think, you know. But the impact my first employer had on me, my first job, I think uh, set the foundation for wanting to be independent, you know. And uh, I have nothing but gratitude for that memory, you know. It, it, was, it was memorable in its own special way because you're talking of a 20-year-old boy who didn't have any experience and his first job was to sit in a shop, watch movies, you know, not much pressure. Once a while a customer would come. And that also through his reference. He never put any pressure on me, he never told me, you have your targets, go get customers, go call people. Nothing. Very laid back. Because I guess he just wanted someone to run his shop. Later on they changed the name from Dina Al Safa. I think maybe sponsor changed or something. He called it House of Sound. I think that shop is still there, I'm not too sure. It's in Karama somewhere. He still runs the shop, I guess. It's you know, he is retired from Emirates now. I guess somebody else must be working there. People kept you know, people changed with period of time, you know. Uh, hmm. Yes. Uh, yes, what you want? Bye bye. Daddy. That's my daughter. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, these are just memories that remain with you forever, you know. The the best part of the whole thing is one is his experience and he was a nice man. He still is a nice man, I'm sure. Uh, not been in touch with him ever since, but uh, did meet him casually here and there. Still grumpy old fart. <laughs> you know, yeah, how are you, man? You know, he has a deep, deep, bassy voice, you know. Big guy, man. You know, he was so strong, like his, his, his palm is like twice my size of my hand. Big guy, huge. You know, he was so strong that, you know, a television set, the CRT monitor, which was like 80, 85 kilos, I tried to lift, I couldn't lift, man. Even though I used to go to the gym. He said, what the fuck you go to the gym, man? What, what the fuck? And he would just lift it like, as if it was nothing. He was a big guy, man. I remember his uh, <laughs> wife saying, uh, like one day she was talking to me and saying, Loy, you know, Wakar was so strong. He's saying, I said, uh, like she, she would tell me like stuff, how they met and all that. I would be starry-eyed and listen to her. So happy that someone is talking to me. So like, Loy, once when I was young, he slapped me, okay? When I was 20 or something. So uh, he was not an abusive guy. Maybe there was some disagreement when they were young, 20 years or before that. Uh, before, you know, like when I was 20, maybe 20 years before that. He's saying, when he slapped me, Loy, 
I saw stars. I saw stars. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, he slapped you. Ooh. Because, you know, I, I was like, yeah, Lloyd, when he slapped me, I saw stars. And it's like, whew. <laughs> Those are the memories, man. Yeah, nice guy. He would pay me on time. He'd never make any problems for me, you know. <sighs> and yeah, I left him. I I left in a rather bad way. Pissed him off, dumped him once, and then came back and again I had to ditch him. But that's how life is, you know. So like, yeah. So one of the things that I'm grateful for was his. Uh, he treated me nice. I have nothing but good memories. Hey, and it was more like a holiday. But the second gift was his wife. Uh, we bumped into each other on Facebook after many years later. I'm still in touch with her to this date. She's like a motherly. Um, she, I w not that she's old. But she is a very caring woman, a very loving woman. Huh? Like, you know, when you say a motherly figure, like someone who you can, who will guide you the right way, who will give wisdom of life, you know. So, and uh, the funny thing is, we, we after we bumped into each other again, she was kind of Worried or scared, like you know, I had tattoos. You're like, what the fuck happened to him? And is he the same loy? And and later on, she found out I was more or less the same kiddie head. You know, <laughs> always been an immature kid, man. So he kept in touch, and uh, we had this special bond, you know. So we are glad that we got in touch with each other, and we have been chatting ever since. Today I think she's nearly 55 or something. He's also same age. They're retired. They have a successful business, whatever, house and... <sighs> it's funny when you think about it, like 25 years. Ah, 25, 26 years? How time passes by. I wish I had taken photographs, I wish I had... Uh, Taken a few memories of that time. Yeah, what to do? That time no camera, only a simple phone. And but I have those memories in my head. Yeah, still have those memories. That's all I have. Anyway, today I just thought I'd share this with you. I don't know what message to give you other than. You know, life is this series of memories and moments and it just passes you by before you know it, you know. You just become old. And then when you look back on life, you're like, ah, oh, fuck. You know? I'm nothing but gratitude for this, this experience and I'm lucky that uh, he was my first full-time employer. So yeah, so if he's watching, <laughs> just want to say thank you to him and, you know, I'm still in touch with his wife, <laughs> my charm with women. <laughs> I call her Mumsy, you know, call her Mumsy. <laughs> so I think I'll be in touch with her until the day. He's, he's a great man, he's a wonderful father, you know. His wife tells me he, stories like, you know, he very loving father, very caring husband and, you know, you know, the typical stuff a woman who loves her husband would say. So anyway, like I told you, there are many other stories or bits in this of my experience, eh? but, you know, I need to keep it private, so... But they were all good. Anyway, I just thought today I'd share this with you. Just a normal story of my life. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts. Okay? You guys take care. Ciao. Daddy. 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 
Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. (laughs) 